Hey guys, me again with another YouTube video. I know I don't usually do gameplay videos or things like that of that nature, but I do need to train up the Flappy right here and this Pawn Sham up to basically fighting standards because I've reached the next uh, gym leader. And she's not exactly easy to defeat. So. I wanted to join the fire type. Or the magma gain. I don't Which I think was up here. I don't know what uh, Pokemon you get as a reward from the magma gain. But I'm... Um, Hoping it's something good. So far, we have Lit Leo as our fire type. Because you can get a Panseer, but Panseer is absolute garbage. So, I want something different from that. Anyhow, back to other things. So, I was going to talk a little bit about the channel and things like that. A little bit about like an updates or stuff like that while I play this game. And I'm going to be playing for a while. It takes a while to grind out. Uh, things in this game. It's going to take me forever to get to where I'm going. Uh, if I wanted to edit, I could probably cut all this out, but I don't want to edit. I just want to like test the limitations of the mic and the laptop, see if this is a viable way to start doing uh, certain videos and things like that. So, yeah, and I probably should have went the other way. So, Pawn Sham needs to be trained somewhere where you could easily oko things but have plenty of uh, I guess plenty of experience coming back from it so that makes any sense. We're going to check down here in the Obsidian Slums where I caught him in the first place to see what we can do. We'll probably stay right here at the entrance and walk back and forth. I'm gonna probably take and switch him to the front. So, anyhow, updates about the channel so far. Uh, there are mocks in the works slash that have been made that I need to make videos for. There's two on the desktop that you might have noticed when I was launching the screen recording software. Um, I have the FN F2000 created the bullpup assault rifle that takes uh, standard M4 magazines. It was a pretty fun build to be honest. It was a lot of um, this one. I did a lot of side building techniques on it. I didn't use the standard uh, bricks. I've started moving into using uh, Legos more or less as a way to kind of. Uh, branch out into other things like uh, well, take for example the FS 2000 or the FN F 2000 FS is the uh, special forces one that has real systems on it like most of the body itself is two studs wide internally and then all the ooh, flying type I don't want that and then all of the uh, like all the internals where it's two studs wide are basically like slopes and bracket pieces or not slopes and bracket pieces plates and bracket pieces and then on the outside of those bracket pieces are like giant panels of uh, flats that are used to basically turn it into a, uh, a kind of like a thicker studded type thing so it's three studs but it's like three studs minus like a few millimeters because it's uh it's on bracket pieces and it's flats it's not straight uh just studs on the outside of it so probably shouldn't have come to this area to farm hopefully slash will get us through this slash is a pretty op move so full disclosure i'm absolute garbage at the pokemon game in general I walked into an electric type gym with a buy barrel, that, um, not knowing that it was a water type. Uh, so, yeah, 
complete garbage at this game, like I said. Ugh. Anyhow, I got all night to play, basically. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going over to a friend's house to record basically some more of this game, but it's not going to be me playing. It's going to be one of my friends playing. Uh, he needs to play like a lot more than I have. I'm like super far ahead of him. I've already met a lot of the different characters that he hasn't met just yet. So, hopefully... Fucking Pound Champ can hit this Venonat just once. No, alright. Well, Pound Champ's gonna die, so I'm gonna switch out the Flaffy. At least Flaffy could get the experience, even though Flaffy's like a few levels higher, and it's not gonna get that much uh, use out of a level 13 Venonat. I want Flaffy to evolve into a uh, Ampardos already, or Ampardos. It's technically Ampardos because it comes from the amp, like the word amp. So I guess you pronounce the P. A lot of times I'll pronounce it without saying the P, and it just comes out as Ampardos or something like that. I don't know. I can't even pronounce half these Pokemon names. They're so damn complicated. I think this is the Daycare couple. Yeah, it is. I wonder if it's free to raise Pokemon. And how much money do I have? I have plenty of cash. The level cap in this game is horrible, by the way. That's why my Skunt Tank, if you noticed, is over-leveled. It doesn't listen to me half the time. I have Comic Candy to feed to it. I just keep forgetting. I should probably do it right now, but I'm not going to. Um, I need to come up to the uh, ward right up here, the Onyx ward, uh, and go to the casino or the... What do they call it? The um, game corner? Something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. I gotta change in this money that I have because I really want the Shinx right here. 5,000 coins. And I only got uh, 500. So uh, I want to trade in 10,000 or 10,000. I don't know. I didn't get a match on the lotto thing either. So we'll just go ahead and buy that. So now then we're one-fifth of the way to getting ourselves a Shinx. I don't know if uh, Shinx will be better than M. Pardos. I'm going to guess, possibly. When I played through Pearl, Lynx, or, um, Luxray was the one that I used pretty much all the way through up until the Elite Four. I'm still using it in the Elite Four. I technically haven't beat Pearl all the way just yet. I've beaten Pearl before on my cousin's account, and then I erased over it, so now I'm playing through one more time as a, uh, a fresh one. So I have to go back and redo the Elite Four, but while I was doing that, my friend introduced me to this game, so now I want to play through this game, so now I'm playing this game. So this game's taking up all my time. I've put in over 20 hours, I think, and I've only beaten... Uh, Two gems, basically. I'm at the third gem, technically, right now. So, um, hopefully, we get to beating it just soon. Uh, this is why I'm training right now. This is why I'm talking to you guys, things like that. So, uh, another channel update. I got a brand new laptop. That's what I'm playing on right now. It took me forever to uh, switch the save file over from my old laptop to this one. Um, I had to download screen recording software onto this laptop which wasn't too hard it has a built-in microphone which is what I'm using to record which is probably why you can hear the uh, fan the internal fan for this laptop as well it's going off right now so chances are you guys hear that um, basically I don't know if I'm gonna use this for uh, my Lego videos or not I might I might not it just depends um, Honestly, don't exactly know whether or not I'll use it for uh, making YouTube videos because the thing about this is it's kind of loud. It picks up on a few different things, so I don't know just yet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys know? Because I sure don't know. Uh, so that's a little bit of a news. This was my Christmas present, technically. Um, 
among other things. I got a battery for my AK-74 um, that I used the day after Christmas, uh, the 26th. We went out to the local airsoft field, me and a buddy of mine, and we did some um, some pretty good games. Uh, he had one of the most redonkulous games that I've ever seen. We basically played Capture the Flag, but instead of Capture the Flag, it had a few different rules, and it's called football. And basically what happens is one team starts on the north end of the field and one team starts on the south end of the field and it's a decently it's a pretty much a football sized field and each team is given a flag and the goal is to run their flag as far or as close to as possible to the enemy base um, and my friend I'll just use his name David I mean, I want to say he's the fastest person I've ever seen run because at one point in time he dropped his M4 out in the back uh, and it basically up against an abandoned building. He picked up the flag and he drew his Glock 22 that he had and he took off. And I mean took off and I really wish that my camera hadn't run out of space on the memory card uh, and then died after that. It ran out of battery and space at the same time basically. Because I really, really wanted to review this footage because he did such an amazing job at running this flag. He basically got it all the way up to the enemy base, like literally the building that they spawn behind is where he got it up to. And uh, unfortunately, the game ended pretty much right as he got there. So if he had stepped into the building itself, we would have won automatically, but we won anyway, so that's all good. So shout out to David. Uh, I got two gameplay footages from uh, that field and by two I mean I want to say one full game which is 30 minutes long and I want to say that 20 minutes of that is the ref talking um, I want to complain about this a little bit the refs out at this field are probably some of the worst refs I've had there were three refs when we went out Saturday at this field and I want to say that two of the three were absolutely worthless. They did not explain the rules to the game modes correctly. They didn't explain it so that it made sense. They basically, uh, we'll take for example this one white guy, rushed us out down this path. This is a hundred acre field by the way, in case you guys didn't know. He rushed us out down this path saying, hurry up guys, we want to play this game. We want to play this game as soon as possible, as soon as possible. And we all got to the uh, the place where we're going to start, basically. And he sat there, and he sat there, and he sat there for a good 10 minutes saying nothing to any of us before he finally started saying something. And it's not because he was waiting on more people to arrive or anything like that. Everyone was pretty much already there. He was just being, I don't know... I want to say facetious, that's a word, but um, I don't know if that's in the right context of the word or not. He basically, it was kind of hypocritical of him to rush all of us out there, basically at a jog. Uh, it wasn't like, it was a fast walk, any faster would have been a jog, and then turn around and then make us stand around and wait after complaining about us not coming out quick enough or anything like that. that that's what really irked me about the uh, the ref that sca same game turned out into probably one of the worst airsoft games that i've ever played in terms of um just confusion mass confusion because it was a three team game of flag domination is the best way i can put it they call it some weird name that i can't even remember because it was such a bad game but I, I know i just never want to play it again there was a white tape team, red tape team, and the no tape team. And I had the unfortunate task of being on the no tape team. Uh, the rules of the game mode as explained to us by the ref at the start of the video. And you can listen in because I got this on video. So I guarantee this is 100% true. Is basically red team has a flag, white team has a flag. Whoever has the most flags at the end of the round, the match wins the game the only way to spawn back into the game after being hit is to call for your team's medic and they have to come touch you or after two minutes of sitting there and your medic not appearing you can get up and walk back to your spawn and spawn there 
So it sounded okay at first, and then I was like, okay, well, if they get us spawning as a triangle so that no team has the advantage or the disadvantage, we're pretty much golden. We'll be able to have like a really, really well-fought game where one team might go for another team while the other team goes behind that team, and then you have... It's a rock, paper, scissors type thing is basically what I'm trying to say. What ended up happening is we basically spawned in a straight line. Uh, red team spawned far north. White team spawned far south. No team spawned in the middle of both of those teams. You can see the bullshit that already happened here because if the whole point of the game is to get another enemy's flag then the only way to technically do that is to go for the team closest to you because you want to do it as fast as possible and then go set up a defense so that you can just keep domination over the two of the three flags. Well, what happened was since we were in the middle, red team instantly came for us and so did white team. And red team had a professional airsofting team on it. Nothing against these guys because they didn't know. I, I just want to put that out there as full disclosure. They pushed we okay here's what happened red team got the rules explained to them first they went to their spawn white team got the rules explained to them they went to their spawn we got the rules explained to us and then we went to our spawn so we walked into our spawn and then all of like 30 seconds after we walked into our spawn we were suddenly hit by red team and you'll see it i'm the first one the uh spot enemy contact and i point and i'll yell contact and you'll see like just this mass of red taped uh, enemies moving towards us and these guys are professionals so of course they got all the movement and tactics down they got the upgraded kits that our team doesn't and things like that so they're just laying waste to our lines and stuff and they basically they come through and they take over our spawn within seconds and I mean seconds and our entire team is left there wondering what to do like it's not like we can spawn because the second we spawn, either they're going to get shot and mad at us because they we spawned and they shot and then, oh, bullshit, you guys just spawned, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. Or we're going to get mad at them because they're going to shoot us like the second after we spawn and it's going to be this never-ending cycle of horribleness, basically. Uh, so, basically what ended up happening is our team sat around for... Ever, I want to say about five minutes doing absolutely nothing because no matter what we did, we were screwed moving forward, basically. And our flag carrier was smart enough to shove the flag down his pants, basically, so the enemy team couldn't see it, so the enemy team couldn't um, take it. I don't want to say that's a cheap tactic, but that is a pretty smart tactic because I'm pretty sure no other team decided to doing that, and... The ref, who was already horrible at explaining rules, did not say anything against that. So, might as well exploit the system where it can be exploited. Any hoot, we got pincer maneuvered by two teams. We got completely dominated by red team. Which wouldn't have been so bad had the medic not up and up left. And I mean left. I said contact within the first second of seeing the enemy, and the you'll see the medic sitting right in front of me, and you'll watch him run behind me all of a sudden. I did not see him until we got back into our uh, spawn area, or not our spawn area, our um, starting area, like where you go to gear up when you first get there and you buy your tickets and things like that. I didn't see the medic in that entire game until we got there, and... That's redonkulous. Like, if you're a medic and you completely abandon your team and you never come back for them, there's a problem. You need to get that fixed because that's just... Our entire team is relying on you to spawn and you're nowhere in sight. That's that's ridiculous. Come on. So that, that was another issue that we ran into. Um, and then... The guy leading our team, the flag uh, carrier, is a Marine in the Marine Corps. So at the end of the match, when it started raining heavily, pretty much all of us were like, whatever, 
because he had raised morale in the team so much and the group that we had that the rain wasn't going to break our spirit basically so we were good and um we wanted to fight we wanted to play more of the game but um the refs decided that it wasn't a good idea to play in the uh, rain so they called it early and that ended that game um so i, I mean we were Moving to a better position, we were going to go to one of the back sniper towers, basically, and just hold up there as much as possible, and uh, just watch from all directions and lay down and covering fire uh, until the game ended, where no one would be able to get a flag, things like that. But uh, the refs called it early, so we just kind of had to give up on that idea, which it was bad but good at the same time. Like I, I can see why they called the game early because of the rain but at the same time i'm running an ak-74 and it's a pretty much a closed system uh, at that time i was running the stick battery on the inside of the dust cover and the handguard so there's pretty much no water getting up inside there uh, and i ran it pretty hard all day long anyways the water was the least of its worries i was uh with one game up we were flanking around in the jungle me and david and I didn't give a damn what was in the way of that rifle. It was plants and bushes and tree limbs and things like that. It took it all. I just, I demolished the, that thing. I probably put a few good scratches in it. I'm going to have to take a look at the really now. Um, so that, you know, bad refs, that's the thing that you're going to have to deal with. We had one instance of a person not calling their hits that I know of anyhow. I David only told me of this one instance. I didn't have any problems because I couldn't hit anything to save my damn life. It was really windy. Uh, wind is always a factor on an outdoor field like this, so I couldn't hit shit. Uh, but we were playing a basic, like a really small team deathmatch game at the end of the day, right like 10 minutes before they closed. We were just going to play one real quick TDM just to get some um, new people into the game. Uh, basically, just so they kind of understand a little bit about the rules and whatnot. So the ref, uh, who speaks Spanish, this was the good ref, by the way, um, explained to them in Spanish, because the family only spoke Spanish, basically the rules and things like that. And first round, we absolutely demolished them. They get the bad spawn. There is a bad spawn on this map, and I do want to uh, make that blatantly clear it wasn't because we were the best team ever we're professionals we deserve to be sponsored by every single company in the world no it was because they got the world's shittiest spawn like i'm not even kidding the building that they were in is ricochet city it's every round that you put in that building ricochets two or three times it's not a pleasant feeling one of the guys that we had on our team had an h or um yeah an hpa uh, so it was like all you would hear on the inside of the building is all these BBs just bouncing around and then you'd hear someone like scream and it's never nice hearing someone scream because you'd feel kind of bad and you'll tell your teammate like yo switch to semi-auto only man come on these guys are new you need to kind of go easy on them it's unfair uh, basically what happened is the ref called that round and he said okay look you guys completely demolished them they couldn't even leave their spawn so here's what we're going to do. We're going to flip spawns. You get the shit side this time, and we'll see how uh, everything plays out. So it was like, all right, no problem. So our team went into the shit spawn building, and we decided, all right, guys, first things first, we need to get out of spawn. If we stay here, we're going to get demolished like those guys did last round. No matter how new these guys are, it's just that bad of a spawn. So ref blows the whistle and we take off. And I mean, we took off quick. We had a, uh, a black guy in the army, I want to believe, who flanked around right to go low crawl out to a uh, like a tire or something like that, I want to say, like really low cover and just lay down suppressive fire so that the rest of us could go kind of like the farther routes. And he took off and he took off quick. And when he got to his position, he never moved. I don't think he moved the entire game from that one spot. Uh, basically, what happened was 
there's a right flank and a left flank, and the left flank goes through a little bit of a forest. And I don't know where I got hit from, but I got hit from somewhere. I want to say someone who got hit but didn't understand they were out shot me, and I was like, okay, whatever, I'm going to be the better person, and I'll call it out. So I called it out, and I sat down, and from out of nowhere, the father to this family comes charging out of the forest and David puts I want to say a good five rounds in this dude's chest and you watch him flinch and then the BBs bounce off his chest so it's very clear that they've hit him and he didn't call it any straight up shot Ooh, shiny oddish he shot David and David's like wait I hit you well this guy doesn't speak English so he has no idea what David is saying and out of nowhere, he squats right behind me, and I'm out, and this guy isn't, and I don't want to take incoming fire. Like, have you ever been out in an airsoft game, and then out of nowhere, you get hit by someone else who's trying to shoot at one of your teammates? It's not the most pleasant feeling in the world. And this guy's taking, basically using my body as a shield to defend himself, and that is not okay, because I'll tell you what. Basically, the newbie team got the professional airsoft team as reinforcements from the field game that had just ended because they run simultaneous games. And the enemy team thought that their comrade was from my team because of how, where his position was. So they started spraying in my direction with an HPA. And I had my hand up over the cover of the brush, basically, and I took a solid stream of BBs in the hand and the arm and it did not feel good out of that HPA oh my gosh let me tell you I just at that point in time I, I stood up and I was like what are you doing this is like dude I'm out and the guy waved at me and I was I waved back and I was like yeah just so you know I'm out and he's like oh okay no problem and I was like yeah and this guy beside me is on your team and he's like oh he is oh well then I'm super sorry about shooting you so you know I forgave him in the end of the day but it's really not okay for an enemy to come hug a teammate's butt or a, a person's body as a shield. That That's not cool. Like, come on, man. I could understand if it's like laser tag where there's no pain involved in the hits, but when you get a hit uh, in the hand, particularly an airsoft with BB after BB, it can really add up to some excruciating pain. I've seen some pretty bad wounds. I watched someone's tooth get shot out on Saturday because they weren't running lower face protection. Um, you want to talk about something that looked like it hurt, like holy shit. Basically chipped off half of the tooth. I felt so bad for him. He has to go in Monday, so he had to wait another few days or another day or two before he could go in to get his tooth fixed, replaced, taken out, or something like that. So he had to eat with the broken tooth it was oh man it was bad um so that that's pretty much all the airsoft stories that's all i have to really say about that uh, another few things that have been happening i do have two new lego guns on the channel i'm gonna go ahead and take a drink of sprite though <coughs> kind of keep my voice from getting a too sore because I can already feel it getting kind of sore. I have the F2000 uh, made from um, Modern Warfare 2 is basically what I ended up going with. I don't like the one from Battlefield because it has the rail systems over the grip, uh, the front grip in front of the trigger guard. I don't like that, so I didn't go with that one. Uh, so I went with the Modern Warfare 2 one, which has basically just the front grip. It's like a super basic F2000. Uh, it's uh, all gray with the black details and things like that. So I went with that one. It looks pretty good. Um, I definitely can't wait to show that one off to you guys. i still got other videos that I need to upload, though, so that's going to have to wait. Uh, another gun that I have built is the Uzi Pro. It's the latest Uzi-style uh, weapon from IWI. Uh, basically, Israel has come out with an upgraded Uzi. It's a really, really small weapon. Like, I'm talking super small it's basically a micro excuse me micro uzi 
with the Maneba M9 kind of um, uh, idea of weapon. So there's like a really overextended trigger guard that acts kind of like a front grip with an extended barrel and rail systems on either side of the barrel and a rail system on top of the weapon because instead of the charging handle being on top of the weapon on the bolt itself they changed it so that it charges off the side kind of like the Galil Ace uh, series of weapons. So those are two of the newest weapons that I have. I'm going to put this right over here. get this laptop off my lap the fan is starting to heat up and stuff and it's I have to turn the uh, the overhead fan down so you guys don't hear that as much so it's getting kind of hot in here especially with the laptop running so um where was I I was talking about new guns so micro or uh, Uzi pro will be out soon the F2000 will be out soon. Oh, yeah, and then the Locust. I want to talk about the Locust. The Locust is complete. Uh, the one thing that I need to do is add a scope onto it. And I can't just use Alan's Custom Lego Scope like I usually do. I really want to, but unfortunately, the scopes used in Black Ops 3 are all unique to the sniper rifle they're being used on. So basically... The Locust has its own unique scope that I'd have to make and then put on. Um, so that's something that I still need to do. I don't know if I really want to do it or not. I don't know if I might make up like some iron sights from uh, like Black Ops 2 days where you had the ballista iron sights and just like put those on. But I, I don't know. I really don't know what I want to do at this point in time with it. So the Locust should be out soon. I'm looking into the next few weapons that I want to make. Obviously, the MP40 and the STG44 are on the list of uh, fan recommendations. I'm in the process of getting another fan recommendation cleared up. I understand, like, kind of like the base model of what the guy wants, but I don't know what game it's from, so I can't find really good images of it to use to kind of model after. I want to say that it's an ACR uh, that's been modified just a little bit. So that it has different furniture, but I'm not incredibly sure. I can't confirm or deny that at this point. I'm going to have to wait until uh, that guy gets back in the comments with me. So shout out to him. Your request will be made soon. Uh, Ranger and the other person who suggested the STG-44. Don't worry, those are in the works. There are just other guns that I find a tad bit easier to make than a brand new STG-44 or a... Um, MP40, like um, the Uzi Pro started out as the Maneba M9, and I deleted the entire the grip uh, section and the trigger guard section, and instead replaced all of that with a custom built uh, grip using bracket pieces and things like that, and uh, a brand new trigger guard, the oversized one that kind of serves as a grip, and then on top of that, I had to redesign the upper receiver for the most part to accept the charging handle, the new charging handle because it charges off the side, some of the uh, rail systems, and then I shortened the barrel just a little bit because the barrel is actually shorter on the Uzi Pro than it is the Micro Uzi. And then I had to remove the sling mount from the back because there's actually a stock that goes there. However, I don't know if I'll be doing the stock because the stock looks like a wire stock, which basically means if you were to make that out of Lego, it'd be super, super weak in real life. And I don't want to do that. So I might as well just leave it off and then leave it kind of as a pistol instead of a SBR. Uh, other guns that are in the pipeline... Um, so when I had my giant recording session like two, three weeks ago, I recorded a crap ton of uh, weapon videos 
A lot of those are still not out. I think I have like a good five or six more that I need to uh, upload. I'm going to space those out, of course, because I need to have time to kind of come through and make more guns as I want to. So that I can start having like all these constant uploads and not like huge, huge months worth of breaks. So like one a week and then at the same time build like one or two guns a week and then do like just like a mass uh, recording night. Like I'm doing kind of like right now where I'm just recording video after video after video after video. And then uploading them periodically is a good way to give myself like a backlog and something to work with. So even if um, like I don't make content for one week, it's not that big of a deal because I have a video to back me up. Um, schedules for uploading, that's definitely not going to happen. Uh, college starts up January the 11th, so I'm going to lose time again. And this semester, I'm taking five classes. And when you take five classes, obviously the workload gets a tad bit heavier with the tad bit be or with the workload being that heavy obviously uh i'm gonna have a little bit of trouble coming home and doing some of the things that i want to do like play smite play pokemon reborn like i am now work on lego models and things like that obviously i'm gonna have a tad bit of a issue anyhow uh, my pawn champ is now level 24 that's obviously not Anywhere near high enough level to go challenge Shelly. I need him to be at least level 30 to be somewhat useful. Obviously, Yon Mega will fuck me over with um, his flying type moves and things like that. But it'll be somewhat helpful for like um, Anorith, I think is one of, one of the Pokemon. The bug rock type, I want to say, is uh, what it is. Anyhow, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to comment and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. See you later.